Hi, this is John from JavaFXTutorials.com. Today's video goes along with the tutorial I've created here in the tutorial section called Swishing to Different Screens in JavaFX and FXML, as well as creating a pop-up window in JavaFX and FXML. Let me show you a live demonstration here of how those two things work. So here I've got a program and another one side by side. And in this first version, I'm clicking to go to another scene and coming back again. This one here does something similar, except the other scene comes up as a pop-up window in front of the other one. Now, while it's popped up, I can't do anything in the background here. I have to come back here first and dismiss this one. Okay, so these are two different techniques you can use to switch from one screen to another in JavaFX. This is how I start every new demonstration. I'm going to create two new projects, the FX application and the FXML, both to do the same thing. For the FX application, I'm going to give it some kind of a name, ending with FX, so I can keep it separate from the FXML. Once I'm done that, I'm going to create the other version in FXML, giving it the same name with FXML at the end of it. This will help me sort things out later when I go to work on both projects at the same time, because in the end, they're both going to do the same thing. So now that I'm done, the FX version, I'm going to erase all of the code except for the last four or five lines. I am going to need a stack pane or some kind of a pane, as well as a scene and a stage. So I'm going to clean everything else out there, as well as the comments at the very top of the code. Moving on to the FXML, the first thing I do is I go to Scene Builder and I delete the label and the button. Just click on both of those and just delete with the delete key. And I'm going to design my own interface later. I'll save it for now. And the last place I go is the controller for the FXML document. I'm going to delete the label here as well that I deleted from the form, as well as the code and handle button action so I can write my own code later. Lastly, I'm going to remove the comments at the top and I'm ready to start my demonstration. So first we're going to take a look at how JavaFX handles changing scenes in the application. So here's the source code. I'm going to go through it line by line without having you watch me type it up. I've got it typed up already and I'm just going to spend the time explaining each thing as I go. So at the very top of this we're going to create enough objects and controls to create two different scenes. So I need two buttons, I need two labels, two flow panes which will contain the buttons and the labels along with a stage. And then I'm going to have two scenes and the stage will switch from one to the other. Ultimately, here's what I'm trying to build. So on one, on one scene I'll have the one label and the one button. The other scene will have the other label and the other button. Remember, the scene itself can't contain anything directly other than a root object like a flow pane. So it's really these flow panes that are going to contain all the objects. The scene will just contain the flow pane. So next we have the start method. And what you do in start primarily is you construct all of these objects. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to make a reference to primary stage. If you look on the previous slide here, I do have a stage variable. The reason I have that stage variable and the reason I'm capturing it to primary stage here is I'm going to want to use stage in another method later on. If I don't make reference to it here, I don't have access to the primary stage. So this basically says, let stage and primary stage refer to the same stage. That way later on in the other method, I can have the stage change to a different scene, as you'll see later on. Now we're going to build the objects we need for the first scene. So that means we need a new button. So there's how we make the button. And we're going to have the button, when it's clicked on, run a method called handle button action, which we'll define later on. Then we need a label and we need a flow pane. So now we're going to add everything to the flow pane, add the label, add the button. While we're at it, we're going to set some padding and some vertical gap between the label and the button. While I'm at it too, I'm going to set the style of my first flow pane to red, just so you can see a noticeable difference between the two flow panes as we switch from one scene to the next. The next screen is pretty much the same thing, only we're going to do it now for the second um, flow pane and the second scene. So there's the second button, there's the second label, and the second flow pane, and I'm basically making it the same way. Same setting for padding, same setting for vertical gap. The only difference is I'm going to make it a different background color. I'm going to make it tan instead. Alright, so now that we've built the two flow panes, what we can do next is we can uh, create our two scenes. Okay, so here's how I create each scene. I just supply the, the flow pane that I want to make the scene out of and give myself a width and a height. So I'm going to make them both the same size. Alright, now 
once the stage comes into play, we set the title. And this, this is the code that comes up automatically every time you start a new JavaFX application. So I'm going to set the title. Um, I'm going to set the scene, but you can only set one scene to the primary stage. Since I want scene one to be the opening scene, I'm going to set scene one into primary stage. But scene two is loaded into the background, and we can set it to that scene whenever we want to. All right, and then the rest of it is just to show, and that ends the start method. All that's left to be done now is to define the handle button action. So earlier on, I had each button set on action to this handle button action event. So here's the main highlight of this video. So what we're going to do is if I've chosen BTN2, I'm going to ask the stage to set its scene to scene 1. Else, I must have hit BTN1, so I'm going to set the stage to scene 2. Okay, and that's how we get the stage to set one scene to another. So on the FXML side, the first thing I'm going to do is double click on my FXML document. And that will bring me into Scene Builder. And um, I already deleted the label and the button, although I didn't really need to do that in this case, because I'm just going to put them back in. But let me just quickly add those again. So I'm going to put a button somewhere down here. And again, this is just a really simple example. So the design of this really isn't that difficult. Um, and then a label up here. and. Um, the label is simply just going to say, you know, this is scene one. Let's put that in there. Okay, and then the button, um, the text property over here, I'm going to change to click to go to scene two. All right, so that's set to that. The only other thing I did on this is I went to the pane itself and I added some style, which is simply just the background color, and I set it to red and then right away you can see how that updates. Okay, and then I save that, and now I've got my first scene designed. All right, now the second scene is just as easy. However, with the second scene, I've already got it prepared here of FXML2, but I want to walk through the steps on how to create a new FXML document. And you see both of these documents, the original one and the new one, they're both going to use the same document controller as their source code for what to do when the buttons get clicked on. So you got to be careful when you make your second document that you point it to the same controller as the first one. So the way I did that is I went up to my project here and I just went to a new empty FXML. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. And um, when this comes up, um, you just give it a name. So I'm just going to call this FXML2B because I've already got a 2 and I don't want to erase my 2. All right. On the next step, here's where things are a little bit tricky. You want to use a Java controller, and you want to use an existing controller. Okay, This allows you to browse to the original controller that you've got, and it just is the one that's created automatically when you create the FXML project, and you say open. So what you're in a sense saying is, I'm going to use the same controller file for this FXML document as I did for the other one. All right, and then we can just hit finish at this point and it gives us a brand new blank document. Okay, so if I was to go into this brand new document, FXML2B, okay, it'll bring me into Scene Builder and give me the same anchor pane um, with nothing else on it. So I can essentially build this one exactly the same way that I built the first one, with a button and a label and maybe a tan background color. All right, but I'm not going to do that part again because I've already got that done. Um, the next important step is in both the FXML and FXML2 document, uh, you want to go to the controller. So let me just come to the controller first. And I want to declare BTN1 and BTN2, okay? because these are the two buttons that I'm going to be using. Even though both of these are on separate documents, I can declare them both in here in the FXML document controller. And I can go to the two separate files and point them to these two declared variables. Okay, so if I go back into the original one that I designed at the start of this part of the video, so let me just go into the original one here. When you first design this thing, let's call this back up here, um, it doesn't connect it to any FXML variables because you have yet to go back to the controller and declare those. So once you've done that, you've got to come back to your FXML document, go into the code section, and you have to say, okay, this button represents BTN1 from the controller. Okay, also this button, when it gets clicked on, is going to run handle button action. Okay, so that's really important that you do that on both FXML documents so that um, 
the FXML document knows that this is BTN1 and it knows that when it gets clicked on it's going to run handle button action. Alright, so once you've designed both of these and you've connected the ID and the on action for the two buttons on the two different documents, you can then go back to the controller and you can write the code needed to switch the scenes. So let's take a look at how that works. So back in the document controller, we're going to first remember that we have to declare BTN1 and BTN2. So we wrote this in earlier so we could go back and connect these to the objects in Scene Builder. So then what it brings us down to is the handle button action. Okay, so in handle button action, we're going to have a stage variable and we're going to have parent root. Okay, so the, the strategy for this is to find out which button was clicked and get, get this reference to the stage that that button is on so we know which document to load. Okay, so if that sounds a bit confusing, let me show you this uh, step by step. So if I've clicked on BTN1, we want to get a reference to the button stage and here's how we can do that. We can say, let stage equal the scene of button one and then while we're at it, get the window that the scene is on. Remember, the button is on a scene and the scene is on a window. So if we ask the button to get its scene and then ask the scene to get its window, we can then get reference to the stage as the stage that button one is on. Okay, at the same time, we're going to load the other document. Okay, so we're going to load up FXML2, which is the second document I designed. Okay, so those are the two things we do. Now, if it's the other button that I clicked, then I want my stage to reference that button's window. Okay, so the same kind of idea. We're getting button two's scene window, and that becomes the stage that we're referring to. And we're going to load the original document, okay, which is um, fxml document.fxml. Now, one thing I should also mention with both of these, whenever you're loading um, a file like this, you have to either surround this in what's called a try catch block, or to be a little bit more convenient and lazy, you could just add throws IO exception. So this part's not normally here when you start a brand new FXML document. So you do have to add this throws IO exception as well. Okay, so now once we've got the proper reference to the stage that we're working with and loaded the proper FXML document, we can come back out and finish off as follows. We can say, okay, um, let, let us make a new scene with that new document that we're about to load, which is either the original or the new one. And then we're going to say stage, set yourself to that scene. Okay, and then stage.show. All right, so we're essentially saying, okay, let's find out what stage we're working with right now. And then we're going to get that stage to load up the other FXML document and then show. Okay, so this is the way we can switch between scenes in an FXML document. Now I'm going to make changes to the Java FX version and make it a pop-up. So to start with, I'm going to take stage equals primary stage and instead reference it to a brand new stage. So I'm going to bring it down after I create the two new scenes. And I'm going to instead say stage equals new stage. That way we have two stages, the primary stage and this new stage. Now with this new stage, we're going to attach it to scene two. So we'll use the set scene just like we do with any stage that attaches scene two. Now, as this is a pop-up stage, we've got to add one more extra sp step here. So it's going to be stage.init modality. And what that does is it says, hey stage, I want you to pop up. So it's modality dot um, application modal. And that means it's going to be a pop-up stage rather than the main stage. All right, so that creates the new stage. So now when we go to click the button, we've got to go down to the handle button action. And rather than setting the scene, we're just going to have the stage itself show and close. So if we're hitting button two, that means we're on the new pop-up stage. So we're going to ask the stage to close. Else, we're going to have button one cause the stage to, to uh, show and wait, actually. So that's going to cause it to pop up and wait until we dismiss it. All right, and that's how we create a pop-up stage. So if I save this, I'm just going to run it quickly just to make sure that that works the way it's supposed to. So here's the application, and when I click, there's the new stage popping up over top of the old one. So now we're going to look at the FXML way to do the pop-up as well. So now we're looking at the FXML version of this document. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new stage with my stage variable, and this will cause it to pop up over the original stage in the FXML version. The next line of code we don't need, so I'm just going to erase this here. We don't need to get reference to the button stage. Um, the next line after that, though, we do need, 
Remember, this is the code for BTN1. So when I click on BTN1, I do want to load the FXML2 document to, to pop up. So now that I've got the reference to that, I can then with my new pop-up stage, I can set the scene. So I'm going to use stage.setScene, and I'm going to pass in a new scene, and then I'm going to supply root as my new scene. And again, root being the FXML2 document. So this is button one causing it to happen. Uh, like the FX version, we've got to do that stage.init modality. Okay, and again, this is to cause it to be a pop-up. So this is just like the FX version. Um, so modality.application modal. Okay, now here's something new in the FXML version. We've also got to init owner, and this reminds the stage. So stage.init owner. That reminds the stage who its initial owner was, which was BTN1. So this tells the stage, hey, BTN1 was the, the original owner. So this is like we did before. We go btn1.getScene.getWindow. Let me just fix that up there. Okay, and um, from there we can then do this, the stage.show and wait like we did in the other version. So stage.show and wait. And again, this is going to cause it to pop up and wait until we dismiss it. In the meantime, it'll take control of the application. Okay, on the else side, we can clean things up a little bit here. And um, really, once we get the window for BTN2, we can just say stage.close because this is a separate window. So it's going to close and then the original stage will be there. All right, and that's about it. We're going to clean up the rest of the code. We don't need it anymore. I'm going to save this and I'm going to run it. And you'll see the FXML version where we pop up to a new scene and then we dismiss this and go back to the original. All right, so we covered a lot in this video. We covered changing scenes and pop-up scenes and the FX version and the FXML version. I hope you learned a lot from that. This is John from JavaFXTutorials.com. Thanking you for watching this tutorial and hoping that you'll join me again in the future for more JavaFX tutorials. Bye for now.